A couple of days into camp, this new girl fakes an injury to get out of doing some physical games Naturally. and challenges. But she fakes it enough to need to be driven an hour and a half away to the nearest ER. Oh my god! During this said ER visit, the hospital is notified that the girl's name matches a missing child. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Youth Group Chronicles. Welcome back to the show, Aaron Stearns hey guys. and Dustin Co. Great to have you guys here. Appreciate you guys awesome doing these episodes. Here. Thank you for yeah, having us. Absolutely. If you want to send in some stories to this podcast, Please. ygchronicles at gmail.com is where you can send those stories. We will kick this off with some email submissions. Okay. This is from Michael Spatz. Michael said, one of my biggest youth ministry fails happened on our way home from summer camp. No. Mind you, our summer camp is only an hour and a half away from our church, so it's really not a long drive. When we were only 30 minutes away, one of the students in the vans leans forward and asks me if we can make a pit stop. We're only 30 minutes away at this point, so I ask him if he can hold it, and he says he'll try. Another 10 minutes go by, and this kid leans forward again, and this time with more urgency in his voice. <laughs> A lot more urgency. We were about to pass the final rest stop before exit, so I turned off the highway onto the ramp to get to this rest stop. Perhaps it was the promise of reprieve, yep. or is it reprieve or reprieve? Reprieve. 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 I can't read today. Or perhaps it was just it had been held in way too long, but before we were even able to pull up to the front of the entrance of the rest stop, the students started to lose it. I pulled up. And I yell for one of the other students to open the door so he can get out as quickly as possible. <laughs> and he bolts for the bathroom. A few minutes go by, and I get a bad feeling. Another few minutes later, I sent in one of our leaders who was in the van to go check on him. Coward. <laughs> right. <laughs> the leader comes back out and quietly asks one of the boys in the front if they have an extra pair of pants. Oh, man. I decided to go in and see what happened. I didn't even make it to the door of the bathroom before I smelled what happened. Apparently, this student had made it to the stall, but not to the toilet <laughs> before letting loose. It had gotten everywhere. The walls, the seat, the door, all infected. He was desperately trying to clean it up himself, but to no avail. The smell still haunts me to this oh, day. Man. Oh, man. Oh. Uh, uh, that's miserable that is no that is straight up miserable. for everyone involved I mean, that's there's, terrible there's a difference between like hey can we take like a, like a quick pit stop like is and there like, any chance if we don't <laughs> and i'm going to crap my you pants you need to pull over the car now you don't understand <laughs> you have seven miles but like we've we've all we've all been there though Thankfully, yeah. that's never happened, but we've all been there where it's like, oh, I kind of have to go until, oh, I got to go. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm not saying, like, <laughs> I've spray-painted my bathroom or anything. <laughs> you <laughs> haven't? With feces. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> you haven't done that. Because, but what I mean is, like, you, you're, you're, like, you're driving home, mm -hmm. right? I remember, like, when I used to work out in the morning. Yeah. Like, my pre-workout would, like, do its when thing. When it hits, it hits. Oh. You See, know? I don't use pre-workout, and now I'm not going to even more because of that so, 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 so like like i'd be like five minutes away from home i'd take a familiar turn and uh -huh. my like my digestive tract it says it's just it's like time. hey you're almost home <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's that's what happened to this guy yeah uh, oh, have you guys kid. ever like when i was younger because my dad would not stop like for rest stops <laughs> i can't see your like, dad I, stopping no no but see but the thing is like as he's gotten older we stop every 45 minutes now so i don't drive <laughs> with him anywhere but no like we were about an hour away. I think we were about to get to Mansfield. I was like, Dad, I need to pee. You know, mind you, Mansfield's like 45 minutes uh -huh. from my house. And he goes, no. We did not stop. And if from Mansfield to my parents' house is all backwoods, uh -huh. turns, and hills. Yeah. And like, he didn't stop. When we got home, I held it the whole way. I had to pee so bad that I could not walk inside my house. Yeah. Like, I was like. <laughs> that is horrible. <laughs> my dad goes, what's wrong with you? I'm like, hey, that's it. And like, I was probably like 10 at this time. So I'm like crying. I'm like, dad, I just have to be. Yeah. How, okay. How many yeah. siblings do you have again? Seven. Seven siblings? Seven. Yeah. I can, Im I can imagine if I was your parent, I would have been like. Seven. seven. Right. But I can't now, stop every time the kid, a, right. a kid has to pee. But now my dad's like every 45 minutes, coffee break, pee break, coffee break, <laughs> pee break. I'm like, dad, if we stop getting coffee, we won't have to pee. Novel idea, right? <laughs> or like, I don't know. It's a vicious cycle, eh? It's okay. He, he, I'm, just, I'm encouraging him to fly everywhere now. Let me see. This is a story from Brandon Winter. Brandon said, I have a student in my youth group who loves to wear random shirts. At first, I thought it was cool. But one day for youth group, he decided to wear a shirt that said, I love nudes. 
with a photo on it. The parents did not find that shirt very funny. Was it like N O O D S as like no. noodles or like N U D E S? N U D E S. Yeah, that's not funny. <laughs> no. Also, what makes a kid want to wear that to youth group? I'm just, I'm just wondering. I feel like you're gonna get in trouble wearing it to school. Like what? You're gonna get in trouble wearing it to church too. So. Yeah, maybe he, you know, he just needs some prayer and love. <laughs> He just needs Jesus. All right, son, you need to turn that inside out for the rest of the night. <laughs> That's when you go and you get, like, the most embarrassing shirt from the back. Like, Women's Conference 2023. Okay, that would be funny. That would be very funny. Like a women's tank top or something like that's, that. You know, that's not a bad idea. What? Punish if you wear anything shirt? that's inappropriate, have we, like just really. We picked a shirt for you. Yeah, like embarrassing church us. swag. I am God's mighty princess. Or you have to go get them like just like something from a play or something like a Roman soldier. <laughs> or like the God costume. It's all or like white an angel. And flowy. Yeah. They have to be an angel for the rest of youth group or something. Okay, that would be funny. We're on to something here. I like yeah. it. You, those listening, you're welcome to steal. Do it. You're welcome to take these ideas. Do it. Do it. Yeah. This is from Dakota Y. Dakota. Dakota. Dakota said, <laughs> "This is one of my funniest youth." ministry incidents Incidents. one night we decided to go outside and play a racing game with our sixth to ninth graders as it got darker i had pulled my car around to turn the headlights to provide some light my wife decided to take all the game equipment back into our youth room as we were wrapping up and that's when the teens decided that the best thing to do was to start making shapes in the car light on the side of our church yeah they were all having fun and my very innocent wife came out of our youth room and when she saw what they were doing she excitedly said oh my gosh you all should stand there and make love in the lights (laughs) he said to preface their series was on love that night where are they from I don't know where they were from. Because like, I just like, need, if, they, I if they were it. all like homeschooler children, <laughs> they would have yeah. never known. Right? No, no. But but like, I'm been, saying if it was right, right? They all been like, oh yeah, do the L O V E, and then, like the kids would have understood. But like, I'm thinking like our kids at our church, they would have never let you live down, right? No, like you would have to move churches. Yeah, time to move states. Make love in the car light now. You stand right there in the window and you just make love. <laughs> God made it. It's great. <laughs> Do it. This is from Make Zachary love. A. Zachary said, here's what my dad considers to be his most embarrassing moment in ministry. My dad is in his early 20s when he was hired as a youth pastor of a local church. One night after service, he decided he felt the need for an altar call. So as the youth make their way to the front, him, the assistant pastor, and the church elders were were going around laying hands and praying for the students. All seemed to be going fine until a young teen boy was brought up to be prayed for. And note that this boy had a bowl cut, hairstyle, a small mustache. So my dad laid hands on him and loudly began to pray. Father, we pray for this young brother. All that is all his needs, Father, that you would move in his life, etc. Now, the key here is that he kept calling him brother. With his eyes being closed, he hadn't noticed that everyone had stopped laying hands and praying for other people around the church. And it wasn't until about the eighth time that he said, brother, he felt the assistant pastor whisper in his ear that, Wes, this is not a brother. To my dad's horror, he opened his eyes and multiple glares from the congregation members. It turns out that the quote brother he had been praying for was actually a young teen woman. That and to make things worse, she had some sort of disability which made her have the appearance that she did. And when the realization hit him, he said he felt like he was going to pass out from the embarrassment. And literally the assistant pastor had to finish finish the service that night. She had a bowl cut and a mustache? Yes, but I believe there were hormones Right, okay. That were causing the mustache eight times, dude. When you <sighs> screw up so bad. It's so bad. <laughs> that you stop the flow of a prayer line. <laughs> Yo, that's actually crazy. Everyone in the church. And everybody's staring daggers at you. Uh-huh. That's crazy. <laughs> that's crazy. That, I don't know what I would do. Oh my god! That would be uh, you resign at there, that point. There's, n- mm, I don't feel like there's any coming back. Nope. Also, why did she have a bowl cut? I don't know. That's a good question. Maybe it was like the mid '90s. Right, but that I was had a, a bowl dude. cut. In so the mid-90s. yeah, I did. But we're guys. <laughs> but we're guys. But we're, guys. <laughs> but we're mans. So we can give him a little bit of slack. We'll just say that. 
Corpus. However, it's that, that dark. Would be... You're full of zeal. <laughs> you're excited 90s. to pray. There was no lights. In the... Lights were there on. Was... And lights were off in the '90s. There wasn't <laughs> much happening there. And... Come on, re- remember church? Yeah, there was no. Uh, no... The lights were on, or the lights were, went off when the projector was on the wall. That's true. Like, come on, I, <laughs> I ran that projector. <laughs> That sounds like our church up until like oh, I, three I years to, ago. Right? I went to ca- I went to mass for now, the first still? fifteen years of my life. You were Catholic, Catholic. I didn't know that. Very Catholic. Yeah, yeah. Our church has fluorescent lights, and because our church is literally was built by what the Amish. It's a barn basically. Mennonites. Oh, Mennonites. Okay, it was built by Mennonites. It's a barn. It turned into a church essentially. And it's fluorescent lights. Like we have like really nice stage lights and movers and stuff. Beautiful stage lights. But then. The crowd lights, or for the congregation, are either 100% on or 100% off. It's the most annoying thing. (laughs) Yeah. We're working on it. You know, it's a process. Yes. Well, we'll get there one day, right? We'll get there. Thankful for Pastor Kevin and his team. Yeah. They do an incredible job. They're pretty great. This is from Abel Garcia. Abel said... Abel's back. Abel's back. Is this another... Did I already say an Abel? Yeah, Abel. Yeah. Other episodes, right? What he you guys have good memory. He said, this is one of my craziest stories from youth He's, ministry. Ooh. On a Saturday morning, myself, the pastor, and several women from our church were in the fellowship hall getting ready for a fundraiser we were going to have that day. Yes. Suddenly, one of the doors swings open and a woman barges in, mm. screaming and cussing at everybody. Love that. My pastor naturally <laughs> intervened and tried to calm her down and to get her to follow him back outside. She refused, and I see my pastor mouth to me the words, like, call 911. As I'm on the phone explaining what's going on, while still screaming, this woman finally agrees to go back outside. I follow them, and we walk a little bit further, and I'm able to hear the operator at the time as well. But while my pastor is still trying to calm her down, she opens her bag and pulls out a gun. She checks to see if it's loaded, while my pastor turns around to run from her, he explained to me later that in that moment when he saw that she was pointing a gun at him, the only thing that he knew to say was in the name of Jesus. I looked to see her pointing the gun at my pastor's back, which was also the same direction as everyone else inside. And this lady literally shot him, pulled the trigger. As soon as it fired, she quickly put it back in her bag, ran down the road. Before I could even check on him, he was already inside making sure everyone else was okay. Thankfully, no one had been hit. And I ran to my car to follow the woman from a safe distance until the police came and she was arrested. But afterwards, the investigators came and searched all over for about an hour, but they literally could not find a bullet hole anywhere. That's crazy. They told my pastor that they knew that she had fired the gun because when she had been arrested, there was residue yeah. on the gun and it was still warm yeah, 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 yeah. from when they arrested her. We can only explain it as God removing the bullet from midair, protecting yeah. my pastor and everyone else. To this day, no one has still found evidence of the bullet. Yeah, dude, gu- dude, guardian That's angels, amazing. man. That's crazy. That's guardian one angels. of the cooler, cooler stories. That has been sent into the so show. So I have, I, I kind of have it. I mean, that's like, thank you. That's such a cool story. That's, yeah. that's freaking dope. I love that. I, I know that I like at the deacon meeting, I told you uh-huh. this story, mm-hmm. but I was traveling and it was like two in the morning. I had very little sleep. I had to go like see my mother-in-law in the hospital and I'm in the, like the, like the back, back, backwoods of Watkins Glen. <laughs> Them is back. And it was a snow, like a snowstorm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So, like, the roads were, like, full of ice, like, crazy. The width of the road is maybe two and a half car widths. Yeah. There's not, there's, like, nothing Um, back there. And then, like, on either side, there's, like, a four-foot ravine (laughs) that goes in. And so, I didn't see these deer, like, Mm. a family of deer. So, there were three deer, like, perpendicular to, like, how I was driving. So, me being very tired and just not thinking, I slam on the brakes. And there's just enough room on the other side for my car to fit like on the, right. so like i can't steer i can't do anything so my car literally swerves around the deer perfectly and, then just, and like i i keep going that's jesus like it was it was insane unfortunately when it comes to deer i've not been that fortunate oh really no <laughs> <laughs> I've hit two deer. I've never hit a deer. <laughs> Actually, okay, I was pretty fortunate the first time I hit a deer. I was coming home from a church service on the backwoods of PA, and it was, I mean, it wasn't like a dirt road, but it was one you could go 55 or 60 on, and but just woods, right? And this deer jumped off like a ledge near the road. It's probably like a six-foot drop, and there was like no stopping. But when it hit the road, it slipped 
uh, with its hooves, I guess is what they have, right? Mm-hmm. And it went under the car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was a sedan, so you certainly still felt it. Yeah. But literally zero damage to the car. Wow. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. So I guess that was a miracle. Nice. Yeah. I was not going like 30 mile an hour either. I was going 55 or 60. Yeah, no. no so and, I would have totaled the car. And like for my story, it was 45 mile an hour road. I was going 60 miles an hour. In the snowstorm? Yes. Good idea. <laughs> I mean, God. this is upstate driving right here. Yeah, Absolutely. Upstate yeah. New York. <laughs> if, if anything, snowstorms just make you go the actual speed limit on the roads. True. Yeah, that is true. Too many people, oh, I, I got to say, too many people freak out about snow around here, though. Oh, my Still. gosh. I yeah. can't believe it. I'm like, guys, we literally live in the north where yeah. we right. get. Like, what? Saturday morning, I woke up at 6 and I went to the gym. To an inch of snow. There right? was like there was like slush yeah. on the ground, but like it was like slush, but like. This car pulls out in front of me on a 55 mile an hour <laughs> road and is going 20. <laughs> and like, like okay, I we're not to, in like Savannah, Georgia right, here. I, I just slam on my brakes and then like go around it. But at the same time, I'm like, the roads are fine. Yeah. And like, I live on a hill. Like, my hill had some slush on it, but yeah. not, it's not like I lived in Atlanta during snowpocalypse when the highway shut down was gridlocked. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like, How much? Was, like an inch of snow? There was like an inch and a half. But like, no one down there has snow tires. Uh-huh. No one had, there's no plows. There's no infrastructure for it at yeah, all. There's fair. nothing, that's which fair. makes sense because we're in the south. Yeah. When I actually drove to my girlfriend's house, then at, at the girlfriend at the time, I drove up on the sidewalk to drive around cars that were parked in the middle of the road. And so here I am, like, whipping this little, like, t- Toyota Corolla around like a four-wheeler. And, like, it was the best thing ever. People like, how do you drive on the snow? I'm like, you just do. You just got to go for it. Like, you just go. And it, you also, Atlanta, like, that's pretty flat, right? There's yeah. not a lot of hills in Georgia, for the, right? Yeah. For that section, it's, it's pretty flat. Like, like, if there's hills in snow? Okay. Like, there's, control. like, a couple, like, rolling hills, but it's not yeah. bad. If But if it's, like, flat it's and there's flat. snow, you can... You can fly. Right, but like everyone just like <laughs> stopped driving. That's the main thing that happened was like, whatever. Anyway. I think uh, demographically, most of our listeners are in Texas. So uh, they're oh, listening to this and be like, what's, what's snow? My ex live <laughs> in Texas, which is actually... All right, a couple more stories here. This statement. is from Cameron Morrison. Cameron. Cameron said, this is my craziest youth ministry story. This past summer at camp, another youth leader from a different church brought a girl who was the friend of one of her regular youth group kids. Hello, this leader girls. had just met the girl that morning, you know, in the car before driving several hours to camp. A couple of days into camp, this new girl fakes an injury to get out of doing some physical games Naturally. and challenges. <laughs> yep. But she fakes it enough to need to be driven an hour and a half away to the nearest ER. Oh my god! During this said ER visit, the hospital is notified that the girl's name matches a missing child. The youth leader, who, remember, just met this girl the morning of camp, really starts questioning if they had unknowingly kidnapped a child. Oh, my gosh. Everyone was (laughs) assured that it was not the same girl, but that they only had matching names. The hospital took care of her, and they were not allowed to leave. But the police came to the church camp the following day to investigate. It was, in fact... Thankfully, not the same girl that was missing. It was just a crazy coincidence. It even made the news and everything in the wow. area. They reported the girl had been found and were sharing the photo of this girl we brought to camp. Literally on the news. And they had to correct it later. That's crazy. It's fake news. <laughs> That's literally fake, fake, news. fake news. You could you could get in so much trouble for that. Right. As a news organization. That's... And Actually, the poor family of the actual missing kid... Yeah. Hey, Imagine. we found your daughter, and then like show her this picture. That's not yeah, mine. Yeah, that's not my kid. Oh. Well, the news could suck. Wanted to jump. Yeah. I don't like the news. I don't like the news at all. They jumped on that one way too quick. False hope. Did you ever see? <laughs> There's a news clip <laughs> of this of this guy who pranked an airline. Um, it was a Chinese airline, and he gave them like a set of names who died in a plane in a plane crash. And it said, something Wong. <laughs> we too low. <laughs> and then bang, ding, ow. That's hilarious. It's a live, it's like a live thing. We were like reading it. And they were yeah. reading it. And the lady's Dude, like, oh in, her, in her telecaster voice, she's just like, so the names are <laughs> something Wong. Ting Wong. We too low. And bang, ding, ow. <laughs> 
<laughs> look it up on YouTube, dude. It's hilarious. I'm gonna have to look that up after this. That's actually hilarious. I love dude. Ni- live That's news legendary. When that happens. That's so good. <laughs> Jasmine K said, one time on a youth group missions trip, we went around a corner and a two liter root beer bottle rolled onto the floor. In the fall, the bottle got punctured and began to spray all over the entire <laughs> inside of our van until a senior guy decided to put his mouth over it and he essentially started shotgunning half of the two liter until I was able to pull over. Oh my gosh. What a trooper, That's dude. The, it's the root beer challenge at this point. It's no yeah. longer the Sprite it's challenge. It's a root beer challenge. Just do it. <laughs> Get a root beer. Pu- <laughs> Shotgun it. <laughs> Yo, that's a, a liter. That is no joke. That's a lot of. Yeah, that's I mean, a lot of soda. Dude. That's a lot of soda. So I had to do that with a Red Bull when I was driving to work one day. You pop one in the car. Like, I was just driving and like I, I I stopped more suddenly than I planned to. Flew off my passenger seat and I just hear. So naturally, like I reached down there and I put it up to my mouth and I'm driving. And I just popped it open. Just, <laughs> just the whole thing. And I was like, again, it was like that was my Red Bull that for has work. That hurt, dude. I can't so drink that I, much carbon. I bought carbonated a second stuff. one for work because, like, I got to work and I was like, <laughs> "Whoa!" <laughs> a little wired. Who wants to sell fetus? <laughs> anyway, guys, delivered. I appreciate you being here on the podcast. <laughs> yeah. This has been a lot of fun. Yeah, this was Pastor Aaron and uh, Dustin Co. Um, we'll have to do this again soon. Yes. Oh yeah, for yeah. sure. If you're listening to this, <laughs> send us your stories, guys. Ygchronicles at gmail.com. Youth Group Chronicles on YouTube. Subscribe. Hit that notification bell. Again, thanks, everybody, for listening to the podcast. Yeah, and we will you. see you next week. Thank you so see much. you guys.